starts right now. Making headlines this morning, one person is dead up to a dozen hurt following a series of shootings in Arizona. Here at home outside with live cam fiesta underway. It's looking kind of hazy out there this morning, probably the humidity or it could be some dust. We'll figure out what the situation is, but the good news is we have made it to Friday. It is June 18th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Yay, it's the end of the week and we are in fiesta. We are. My coaster Hage was out partying last night with uh, the KSAT crews, doing some great programming in prime time. So Justin Horn is here this morning. Good morning, Justin. Good morning to you guys. It is a Fiesta Friday. Yesterday was hot. We we knew it would be, mm -hmm. but uh, we're going to power through. Even if you're outside for Fiesta, just hydrate. That's going to be the main message here in temperatures this morning in the mid to upper 70s here around San Antonio, 78 degrees. We got clear skies. Take yesterday. And that's basically going to be today. We'll start off clear. We'll get some clouds in the afternoon. We're not looking for much rain. I will warn you, though, we do have uh, air quality alert today. Unhealthy levels of ozone for those who are sensitive to it. So if you have asthma or something like that, keep it in mind today. That's what we have going on. We're also still watching what's uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Still not a tropical depression yet. We thought it would be by this point, but it's just not. Uh, we think that later today it could become a tropical storm as it moves north, regardless all the rain's going to be well to our east. This is going to be a rainmaker for places like New Orleans and Mobile, Alabama, but not here in Texas. We stay on the dry side of things, and that will keep us toasty this weekend, too. Forecast for today, 84, 10 o'clock, 88 noontime. We'll be up in the mid-90s again this afternoon. Really hot by Monday, but we could get some relief by Tuesday. Funnel boundary to talk about. We'll detail that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Mark, Steph. Thank you, Justin. Mystery surrounds a house fire that sent 10 people to the hospital, five of them children. That fire happened at a west side home on Dublin Field near Shanefield off of Loop 1604. It is believed to have started on the second floor, but a cause remains under investigation. Firefighters say some people had to jump out of the second floor window to get out of there. All 10 people were able to make it out of that home alive. They were taken to a nearby hospital for their injuries, including burns and smoke inhalation. Now to that deadly shooting rampage near Phoenix. Police say a man drove to eight different locations, randomly shooting at people on streets and along highways. The rampage left behind 13 victims. One of them was killed. Now investigators are trying to figure out what led to the terrifying shooting spree. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has a story. This morning, a massive investigation underway in the wake of a shooting spree that left at least a dozen people injured and one man dead. We don't know what the motive was. We don't have an idea of what um, this person was thinking when he went out and did this. The first shooting was reported just before noon on Thursday. The suspect allegedly opening fire on a car. Then two more victims were shot by a person also driving a white SUV. There was a very good description given of the person, the vehicle, the license plate and whatnot. So that helped us be able to track that person down. Um, we don't believe there's anyone else involved. Over the next 45 minutes, at least eight shootings were reported across three cities. We have a total of 13 people who are injured, uh, four people who were shot. One of the victims shot and killed while driving on the freeway. Officials say the break in the case came when the local fire department spotted the white SUV and called for backup. Police cornering the suspect an hour and a half after the initial shooting. Officers say they found at least one gun in the SUV during the arrest. Now the FBI and the ATF are joining the investigation. Federal agents working to identify any weapons used in the spree and find out where the shooter got them. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. The U.S. Supreme Court has rejected a challenge to the Affordable Care Act again. It was a 7-2 decision. It was the third time the court has preserved the 2010 health care law. Texas and other Republican-leaning states had sought to strike down the law on technical arguments after Congress reduced the zero to zero the tax penalty for failing to get health insurance. The majority decision written by Justice Stephen Breyer concluded that none of the plaintiffs suffered any injury from zeroing out the penalty and thus lacked legal standing to bring the suit lawsuit at all. Russian President Vladimir Putin is praising U.S. President Joe Biden, describing him as a, quote, professional and completely knowledgeable on all issues. Putin's comments come in the aftermath of his three-hour summit with President Biden on Wednesday in Geneva. The Russian president's praise was a little surprising to some, in part because he had been criticized Biden as mentally unstable during the 2020 election. 
Israel's launched more airstrikes to the Gaza Strip for a second time since a shaky ceasefire ended last month's 11 day war. The strikes came after activists mobilized by the territory's militant Hamas rulers launched incendiary balloons into Israel for a third straight day. There were no immediate reports of casualties from the airstrikes, which could be heard from Gaza City. The Israeli military said it targeted Hamas military compounds and a rocket launching site. Earlier, Israeli police used stun grenades and skunk water to disperse Palestinian protesters from Damascus Gate in East Jerusalem. The Missouri couple that went viral after brandishing guns outside their home during a protest last year pleaded guilty to misdemeanor charges on Thursday. Mark and Patricia McCloskey were seen on video pointing guns at protesters marching through their private community in June of 2020. It happened as protests swept the nation following the police killing of George Floyd. According to court records, Mark McCloskey pleaded guilty to fourth degree assault and faces a $750 fine. Patricia McCloskey pleaded guilty to second degree harassment and faces a fine of $2,000. As part of the plea agreement, the couple also has to surrender their handgun and semi-automatic rifle. Mark Wachowski put out a statement after the hearing saying he wouldn't change his actions if faced with a similar situation again. 436, about 76 degrees. Still ahead, scams involving rental cars are on the rise. What you need to be on the lookout for so you don't lose money. Up next, big changes for the Dallas Mavericks. Plus, the missions try to get back in the win column against Northwest Arkansas. And taking a look outside with live cam, not too bad right now at 76 degrees, but boy, did it get hot yesterday and we're expecting warm temperatures again today. We'll be right back. We start off morning sports with submissions baseball. The team hosted Northwest Arkansas this week at Nelson Wolf Stadium after leading three nothing after four innings of the play. The missions collapsed in the second half of the game and lost 10 to three last night. The team's second consecutive loss following their five game win streak with the loss. San Antonio falls to 21 and 18 series continues tonight. 705 out at the Wolf. A reminder fireworks will also return during tomorrow night's game as well. In a shocking move, Rick Carlisle has resigned as head coach of the Dallas Mavericks, ending a 13-year career with the team, including a 2011 NBA championship. Carlisle released a statement yesterday that said, in part, after a number of in-person conversations with Mark Cuban over the last week today, I informed him that I will not be returning as head coach of the Dallas Mavericks. This was solely my decision, end quote. Carlisle had been the NBA's third longest tenured coach behind Greg Popovich and uh, the Miami Heat's Eric Spolstra until now. Observers believe friction between Carlisle and the team superstar Luka Doncic helped lead to Carlisle's departure. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Former Baylor quarterback Robert Griffin III had played his last down in the NFL, and if so, he is about to enter the broadcast booth at either ESPN or maybe Fox. The New York Post reporting the two networks are in a bidding war for RG3 services, but that he hasn't decided yet whether he wants to continue to play. The 31-year-old has played seven seasons in the NFL after winning the Heisman and the NFL Rookie of the Year award, but his auditions with both networks were outstanding, according to the Post. And now he has some decisions to make. It'll be interesting to see what he decides. I think he will wind up in one of those booths. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. <laughs> and time now is about 441. The demand for rental cars is up, causing a shortage. Now scammers are trying to get people to sign fake rental car offers. What you need to know before renting a car this summer. Also next, the latest look at new discounts being offered by Amazon ahead of Prime Day. And welcome back. It's about 4.43. Amazon has triggered a wave of deep discounts as other retailers try to compete with Prime Day. ABC's Ariel Rochef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, preparing for Prime Day. It has become very competitive. Amazon is, of course, the 800-pound gorilla in the room. Amazon promising 48 hours of epic sales starting Monday, giving GMA a preview of what to watch for, like 50% off this Echo Dot, 25% off Mario Kart Live, part of their toy selection for kids, and up to 40% off Graco baby products. 
we really think customers are going to gravitate towards things to help them get back to that sort of normal life now that we're going out and socializing with friends and family again. Amazon zeroing in on items they've seen success with in the past. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what you need to know to score the best Prime Day deals. Plus, how Target and Walmart are crashing Amazon's party with big sales of their own. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Scammers have zeroed in on another way to rip you off. This time it's fake rental car offers. So if you're searching for a deal on some wheels, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris says proceed with caution. As more families begin to travel, the search for affordable rental cars is in high gear, but supplies are limited. So far, no luck. Yeah, no luck at the moment. Now scammers are seizing the moment. The Federal Trade Commission and Better Business Bureau warn travelers to beware of phony rental car deals, imposter websites, and bogus sponsored links that pop up online. A customer service representative, quote unquote, answers the phone, and it is a scam artist uh, trying to get you to to click or to get involved in a special promotion. They claim they're in a partnership with a legit company, and if you pay up front with that company's gift cards or prepaid cards, you get a discount. One victim told us that once you buy this gift card, you give them the code, they transfer the money, that rep promises to deliver the card to a station or you know a depot or a hub or a location, uh, but you wait, the car never gets there. Now some of the big rental car companies are posting warnings on their websites. To steer clear of this con, take a good look at that website or offer. Is it worded strangely? Does it have misspelled words? Those are tip-offs. The experts advise you verify deals directly with the company using contact info from their official website and pay with a credit card. If you pay with a gift or prepaid card, you will be taken for a ride. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Taken for a ride. 446 on your Friday morning. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin about all that hot weather. Yeah. Everywhere, actually. Everywhere, especially <laughs> the West, guys. The all-time hottest temperature on Earth, 134 in Death Valley. That was back in 1913. Yesterday, they got up to 128. Oh, oh so goodness. close. See, within six degrees, incredibly hot out west. This big ridge pipe pressure on top of the drought that they're seeing, just causing a lot of problems. Uh, even in Las Vegas, last hour, it was still 100 degrees. Uh, it's not going to cool off much there today. They're going to see more heat again. Uh, right now, it's 99 in Las Vegas, 96 in Needles. Los Angeles is doing okay. They're at 64. Uh, it's hot here in Texas, too, but not like that. We're at 78 degrees here in town. 80 in Del Rio, and there's a look outside. We don't have much cloud cover at this hour. We're not looking for a whole lot this morning. 78 degrees, winds are calm, humidity is at 76%. And temperatures 72, Boulevardy, 79, Canyon Lake, 68 right now, Bernie Stage. Feels good there. 67 in Tarpley, 74 down in Pleasanton. And uh, still at 80 in Del Rio, one of the hot spots this morning. It will be hot there this afternoon, no doubt. Uh, humidity tracker shows dew points are in the 70s. This is about where we've been each and every morning. Dew points will fall off a little bit during the afternoon. Heat index will probably make it into the upper 90s today. So it'll feel like 97 this afternoon here in town. You'll find some triple digits down to the south and west and down to the south and east too, I think, with those feels like temperatures. Here's the heat index forecast, and this is what we've been stressing. Monday. Monday, I think, is a day where the heat index could really kind of get out of control. We'll see heat indices right around 100 next few days. Even into Sunday, it'll feel like it's 100 as humidity starts to increase back a little bit Sunday afternoon. But it's Monday. We expect temperatures to get into the upper 90s. Humidity really jumps up. Heat index could go as high as 110 on Monday. So be careful if you're going to be outside. We'll likely get some heat advisories issued with numbers like that. Satellite picture shows we've got uh, fairly quiet conditions here across the state of Texas. But as we go into the Gulf of Mexico, we are still waiting on a tropical depression or tropical storm to form. This has been, feels like a weeks long process here, but we're getting a little bit closer. It looks like this is trying to get better organized. We're still looking for a center of circulation at the surface. And the Hurricane Center, again, is convinced that this is going to become a tropical depression a little bit later today, and eventually a tropical storm. Right now, winds are at 35 miles per hour, but we're calling this a potential tropical depression, regardless of the name. It's just going to bring some good heavy rain to parts of Louisiana by uh, early tomorrow morning winds should be at 45 miles per hour. This will be tropical storm Claudette likely and then heavy rain around New Orleans 
and then moving up into Mississippi and Alabama. As we get into tomorrow, we stay on the dry side of things. But as we go forward in time, let's fast forward to Sunday now. We may see a few showers along the coast. And then Monday, we mentioned that heat and humidity. Well, we've also got a weak frontal battery trying to work in. So all those things combined could give us some storms late on Monday. We'll be watching. Of course, we have the river parades. So we want to keep a close eye on this. Looks like Monday night into Tuesday will be our best chance. This is Tuesday morning. Showers and storms along the front. Then maybe a few more Tuesday afternoon. So here's how it looks on the seven day forecast. We'll go 94 today, 95 tomorrow, 95 Sunday for Father's Day. It'll be hot, but maybe some added cloud cover. 98 Monday, that'll be our hot day. And then that 40% chance of some showers and storms late Monday into Tuesday. 30% chance Tuesday, 20% chance Wednesday. And the front does, quote unquote, cool us down a little bit. We're going 98 to 92. And you know what? We'll take it. Yeah, we will. Yeah, a lot going on on that forecast. Busy, yeah. Thank you, Justin. Right now, it's about 10 till, and we're at 76 degrees. And coming up next, we're checking out Disney's new Pixar film, Luca, that is hitting streaming on Disney Plus today. Here are your lottery numbers this Friday morning. Pick 3760, Fireball 7. Daily four numbers, 4638, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 6, 8, 10, 19, 22. Your Texas two step, 11, 30, 31, 35. Bonus ball, 32. Welcome back. A special look at Disney's new Pixar film, plus details on a highly anticipated Beatles documentary. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Everything good is above the surface. Walking. Take a trip to coastal Italy with the new Pixar film, Luca. The story of two boys who just also happen to be sea creatures and their adventures in the water and on land. Director Enrico Casarosa says the story came from his own childhood. I really wanted to talk about how do friends help us grow up? And what is it about these people that are very different from us that somehow help us find our identity? Luca is out today, streaming on Disney+. Plus. Ah! Premiering Sunday night, Emmy winner Annie Murphy stars in the new series Kevin Can Bleep Himself, which exposes the trope of the long-suffering sitcom wife. And Murphy tells me after thinking about it, she was mad at herself for not watching these shows with a more critical eye. It wasn't until we really started picking apart this script and um, seeing just how much misogyny and racism and homophobia lies beneath this, this laugh track um, that I, I started watching sitcoms with, with a very, very different lens. The series premieres Sunday night on AMC. The highly anticipated Beatles documentary, Get Back, from director Peter Jackson, will hit Disney Plus instead of theaters. Disney says it'll roll out over Thanksgiving this year, six hours total, broken up into three two-hour chunks. Get back, George. And speaking of the Beatles, Sir Paul McCartney has a birthday today. He's 79. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Nah, there's no way. 79. I know. I couldn't yeah. believe it. No way. And if so, I want to know what hair dye he is using because it's yeah, good. He looks great. 455, about 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA as the Supreme Court rejects a challenge to the Affordable Care Act. There's also a new movement to get the oldest justice on the court to retire and make way for a new judge. No vax, no date. We'll tell you how many Americans say they would not date someone who doesn't have their COVID vaccination. Ahead on GMSA at 6, the latest on a deadly tubing accident in North Carolina. At least two people still missing. And we are checking the roads with TransGuide. It's still very, very early, but there are already quite a few folks out there. There's 35 at Evans looking live right now. Steven Cavazos now in the studio. A look at traffic coming up in our next hour. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The Supreme Court upholds the Affordable Care Act for a third time, securing health care for millions. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, why some Democrats want a sitting justice to step down.
And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are at a calm 76 degrees, but it's going to get hot this Father's Day weekend. And good morning to you. It is Friday the 18th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday and happy Fiesta. We're in it now. We got the ball rolling last night here in the Alamo City. Justin Horn is in from Mike Osterhage with more on your Fiesta weekend forecast. Hey there, guys. Good morning, everyone. Temperatures about where they've been the last couple mornings. We're starting off in the mid 70s here. Mostly clear skies, 78 degrees at the airport. Southerly winds at about five miles per hour. Dew point is at 70. That number will come down some this afternoon. Heat index will be somewhere around 97. A little bit later today, we should top out. Air temperature wise, about 94. We'll see a few clouds this afternoon, but we're not looking for much rain. It's gonna be uh, hot and dry. Right now, temperatures 77 in Seguin, 78 Gonzales, 75 Castroville, 67 in Tarpley. Hot weekend, 95 Saturday, 95 Sunday. We may see a few extra clouds on Sunday as that tropical system stays to our east, but it may throw some clouds in our direction. And we're keeping our fingers crossed for some thunderstorms, at least some showers and storms to cool us down a little bit early next week. We'll jump into that forecast here in just a bit. But now we need to talk traffic. Let's jump over to Steven. Good morning to you, sir. Hey, Justin, thanks so much. Well, we are definitely seeing a pretty clear morning right now around the Alamo City. You can take a look here at our maps. Things are looking pretty green, but let's go ahead and bring you to the wall and show you some slowdowns that we're already spotting as the morning is kickstarting here. And this one off I-35 right at 11, FM 1103. Let's go ahead and bring up our system here and show you that the traffic is slowing down there to about 18 miles per hour. And that's because there is construction that is going on in that area. They should be wrapping up within the next hour or so, but this is in the northbound lanes at I-35 again right at FM 1103. So do expect those delays if you're heading out in that direction towards New Braunfels. Now let's go ahead and jump over to another slowdown that has quickly improved here at I-10 eastbound at Fredericksburg Road. Uh, the slowdown was actually happening here for quite a while, but looks like things are moving pretty quickly again at 68 miles per hour around 63 over here. So take it slow, but looks pretty good so far right now. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times. If you are coming in from New Braunfels, uh, 26 minutes from southbound 35, and if you're coming into the downtown area from Bulverde, we're looking at 26 minutes from 281. And if you're coming in from Bernie, we got 24 minutes on I-10. Now let's go ahead and bring it over here to Transcribe, where we do have that construction going on here at 35 at FM 482 is a view from Transcribe. Again, just look at that backup. We're seeing a lot of delays right now, but we'll be watching this one closely. Again, this is all expected to wrap up around six. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Late breaking news this morning. A man out to do his job has become a crime victim. San Antonio police say he was carjacked outside his home on the east side. Katrina Weber is live where that investigation is going on. Now, Katrina, we understand the victim is a driver who a lot of people were counting on. Well, that's right. Uh, he was driving a medical transport van. He was not outside his home, but outside the home of someone he was trying to pick up. When he found himself in a potentially life-threatening uh, situation, police say someone drove up and stuck a gun in his face. Now, you notice there's a car here. That's the car that police say the criminal was driving. Uh, the the driver of the van had pulled up at the street here on Rigsby near South Walters, uh, presumably to pick up a fare, when uh, someone in this car pulled in front of him, jumped out, pointed a gun at him. Police say that the driver got out of his van and ran off, and then uh, the criminals apparently got into the van and took it. Now, police have been processing this car looking for fingerprints. They say it does not appear to be stolen, at least not reported stolen at this point. But uh, they are trying to get whatever clues they can from this car so that they can figure out who drove off with that worker's van. Uh, for a while, police thought they had spotted it, but it turned out it was just another van from the same company. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. For the third time, U.S. Supreme Court has upheld the Affordable Care Act. In a 7-2 decision, the conservative-leaning court ruling against Texas and 17 other Republican-led states that had sued. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with more. It was supposed to be a moment behind the scenes. <laughs> then Vice President Biden heard on a hot mic celebrating President Obama's signature achievement, passing the Affordable Care Act.
This morning, recalling that moment 11 years ago, before an official statement from President Biden, this tweet from his POTUS account. It remains, as ever, a BFD, and it's here to stay. In a 7-2 decision, the Supreme Court upholding the law for a third time. 31 million Americans are insured under the ACA, an all-time high. The law also protects 54 million with pre-existing conditions. President Obama writing, this ruling reaffirms what we have long known to be true. The Affordable Care Act is here to stay. The conservative-leaning court ruling the plaintiffs, Texas, and 17 other Republican-led states who objected to the mandate requiring insurance had not suffered any injury that would give them standing to sue because there is no longer a penalty for not having insurance. Justice Stephen Breyer declaring they have failed to show that they have standing to attack as unconstitutional the act's minimum essential coverage provision. So Recent comments from Senate really Minority Leader Mitch McConnell are pointing to another court battle. Yeah. McConnell threatening to potentially block a Biden Supreme Court nominee in 2023 and 2024 if Republicans win back the Senate. Now, a new push from some progressive Democrats for liberal Justice Stephen Breyer, the oldest serving justice on the court, to step down. This morning, 18 legal scholars publishing a full-page ad in the New York Times calling Breyer a remarkable jurist, but saying it's best for the country if he steps down. Now, no one can force a sitting justice to step down. Justice Breyer is showing no indication he's ready to go. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Texas Governor Greg Abbott visiting the Alamo City yesterday to announce new gun measures. I'm signing seven laws that protect Second Amendment rights in the Lone Star State. One of those laws allows most Texans 21 or older to carry a handgun without a permit or training. Police have expressed concern of, for the measure. Abbott referred to the new law as, quote, the biggest and best of them all, end quote. This state law, along with six others, takes effect in September. You can see a breakdown of the new laws on ksat.com. The partial demolition of the Whit Press building started earlier this week. The development of the property was a topic of passionate efforts to stay, save the historic building. The city's Historic and Design Review Commission approved the partial demolition of it, allowing for the development to move forward. The plan included the preservation of the front concrete facade as well as the two side walls. The Whit Printing Building is part of the city's and nation's Mexican-American history. Did you catch the fireworks last night? It's all part of the grand finale of the Fiesta Fiesta event. To kick off all the Fiesta celebrations, fireworks could be seen lighting up the night sky near the Tower of the Americas. How exciting. Yeah, KSAT 12's Fiesta coverage continues tonight, and it's bigger and better this year. That's right, because starting at 8 p.m., KSAT 12, and the new 96.1 Now will feature Black Eyed Peas, Ava Max, and AJR. They're going to be helping San Antonio reignite Fiesta. Plus, we, Mark and I, are taking you to our city streets for the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau Porch Parade of decorated homes where neighborhoods compete to show off the best Fiesta decorations. All right, so that's tonight. Then on Monday, the Texas Cavaliers River Parade is at Arneson River Theater. Plus, Susan Naylor is the Grand Marshal, and Spurs champ Tony Parker is their honorary Grand Marshal. Tune into the Texas Cavaliers River Parade, 7 p.m. Monday, followed by SA Live's After Party. You can watch it all right here on KSAT 12 and KSAT.com. I know for the Cavaliers Parade, David is looking for Cascarones. So, oh, is he? So he can, uh, you know, he's with Myra, and he likes to get that in her hair. But right. you know what? I think I'm going to help Myra out, and I'm going to get her some Lo Cascarones. Load her up. Yeah. Load her up. <laughs> David's not awake yet, probably. So no, I don't He doesn't think so. know to avoid this whole strategy. <laughs> About 508 on your Friday morning. Would you date someone who does not have their COVID-19 vaccination? We're going to tell you the results of a new survey of Americans. If you need something cool, fun, and inexpensive to do, we'll tell you about some great programs you can take advantage of, courtesy of the San Antonio Public Library. And taking a look outside with live cam. We're in the mid 70s right now, but we are expecting warm temperatures today and this weekend for Father's Day and Fiesta, but we can handle it. We can pull through. <laughs> we'll be right back. So step what I think they were thinking in the art department was one <laughs> of these cute ones that's smiling Aww. at you. And then this smart Alec is me. Well, he's smiling too. I know, but yeah, they're super cute. We love the graphics here today. We do. <laughs> well, it's summertime, and if you have little ones, you know how challenging it can be to keep them entertained now that they're out of school. Mm -hmm. Luckily, the San Antonio Public Library has your back. Summer with Sapple, 
uh, is underway and there are tons of activities for adults, teens and kids. So here's how it works for the kiddos. One of the things children can do when they come to any of our library locations is pick up this bucket activity log. We've got a sand bucket here and they can write or draw whatever they choose to do this summer in the sand there. And beginning July 1st, we hope that they will come back to the library and tell us all about what they did this summer. Tell us about how they met their goals so we can celebrate with them. And we'll also give them a certificate that they can hold on to display proudly however they like, saying that they did celebrate summer with the San Antonio Public Library. Did you see the certificate? Mm -hmm. It has a popsicle in the fruit. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. And that's not all. There's also going to be tons of online events throughout the summer. The list includes a scavenger hunt, pajama story time, and special presentations from Dinosaur George and Explore Opera for Kids. Summer with the San Antonio Public Library, or SAPL, runs until August 31st. And kids, if you don't like it, you get the chancla, and that's why there's a chancla on there. There are options for everyone. <laughs> Including parents. Yes. Right now it's 513, about 76 degrees. And still ahead, get ready to start seeing ads on one of Instagram's most popular features. I was kidding about the whole chancla mm -hmm. thing. Uh, plus <laughs> details on yet another first for Elon Musk's SpaceX program. From prom dresses, to workouts, and new adventures, you hope the more you give, the less they'll miss. But even if your teen was vaccinated against meningitis in the past, they may be missing vaccination for meningitis B. Although uncommon, up to one in five survivors of meningitis will have long-term consequences. Now, as you're thinking about all the vaccines your teen might need, make sure you ask your doctor if your teen is missing meningitis B vaccination. At Panera, we take care of dinner time. We use fresh, clean ingredients to make mouth-watering masterpieces. Order our new flatbread pizzas for dinner tonight with delivery or pickup. Only at Panera. We do it every night. Like clockwork. Do it. Run your dishwasher with Cascade Platinum and save water. Did you know certified dishwashers use less than four gallons per cycle while a running sink uses that every two minutes? So do it with Cascade, the surprising way to save water. Instagram putting ads on one of the app's most popular features. Here's ABC's Deirdre Bolton with details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, ads are hitting Instagram Reels. The ads just debuted on the app's video feed after being tested internationally for a few months. They may look like any other reel looping and up to 30 seconds long, but the ads can be identified by a small sponsored tag. SpaceX is sending more military equipment into orbit. A Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from Cape Canaveral carrying a Space Force GPS satellite. Stage one of the rocket returned safely to Earth nine minutes later. And finally this morning, another reason to get your COVID shot. 30% of Americans surveyed by dating app Bumble said they wouldn't go on a date with someone who is not vaccinated. Bumble is introducing a vaccinated badge on user profiles to show they've gotten their shots. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. If you've been looking to buy a house recently, then you know we're in a red hot seller's market. In fact, some homes right here in Texas are selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars above listing price. So most real estate agents say the prices are being driven up by a number of factors, including a lower inventory of homes and a massive influx of people relocating to Texas from other states. So how do you make yourself more competitive in the eyes of sellers? For starters, many realtors I have you get pre-approved for a mortgage before you even they take you out to see homes. And once you know your budget, shop for homes that are listed for under your max offer. That way you're able to bid above asking price. Try to go ahead and go in with your best offer if that's the house you really want so that you're not taken aback. And be flexible. Be flexible on the closing dates. Be ready to compromise or you may have to be ready to wait. And lastly, try to get an experienced realtor. It can go a long way to helping you with your goals. Good luck out there. It is 
very, very competitive yes, right now. Yes, it is. Let's check on the roads, 518. A lot of construction, Stephen. That's right, Mark and Stephanie. You know, if you're coming in for leaving the downtown San Antonio area on I-35 North, be sure to pack your patience with that coffee because things are moving, but they're not moving very fast, as you can see right over here. Let's go ahead and jump to the wall and show you how things are shaping up right now. Again, this is a view from 35 at FM 42 that there, there is construction going on out there. It's expected to wrap up here, uh, hopefully by 6, but by the looks of it, still causing a lot of headaches for drivers that are heading in, in this direction. Direction. Let's go jump to our maps and see where this is happening at right here at I-35 North at FM 1103. You can see that traffic is slowing down there to 14 miles per hour. So again, not moving very fast right now. So do be prepared if you're heading to the New Braunfels area. We got some delays for you there. Uh, let's go ahead and just jump though here to the bigger scope around the city. That little strip of red looks like a little strip of red in a sea of green right now. Nothing too major to report. But as we've been talking about here, everyone's really excited about Fiesta. We got some road closures that we want you to be out on the aware of if you're going to be celebrating Fiesta de los Reyes today, which is happening at Market Square. Now, according to Public Works website, we have Dolorosa and San Saba are going to be closed to Commerce in Santa Rosa. And it's a single lane full closure, and this is going to be going on from 10 a.m. to midnight all the way up until the 27th, again, to the, according to the Public Works website. So if you're going to be heading out in that direction, be sure to uh, be prepared for these road closures there. But let's go ahead and bring it back here to 35 at FM 42. Things in the southbound lane looking pretty good, but those northbound lanes definitely creating headaches for drivers this morning. No doubt about that. Thank you, Stephen. By virtue of conflicting schedules, there are many co-workers here at KSAT we never get to see in person anymore. I know, one of them behind Justin. And yeah. what, a, what a cute pick. Yeah. Hey, I know that guy. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's Adam Kasky last <laughs> night at Fiesta Fiesta collecting medals with Adam. See, great picture. Uh, sending that into our KSAT Connect. Hey, if you're out in Fia at Fiesta, send in those KSAT Connect pictures. We love to show them and uh, show what's going on. But this great picture. We love it. We love uh, spending time with our viewers and enjoying Fiesta with everybody. The weather was a little hot last night. It's going to be hot this weekend. So if you are planning to go out to these Fiesta events, just know it is going to be toasty out there. Take the water with you. 78 degrees right now at the airport. 78 stints and 74 Kelly, 74 Randolph. We got light winds across the board. If we're going to see any wind today, it's probably going to be a light southeasterly breeze. And some places have dipped into the 60s this morning. This is not bad. 66 in Comfort, 67 in Kerrville. And that's because dew points are a little lower as you get up there into the hill country. But the mid to upper 70s here in Bear County. 73 Carrizo Springs, 76 Catula, 77 right now in Kennedy. Dew points, as I mentioned, a little bit lower up there around Rock Springs, 63, 65. Dew point in Kerrville, but 70s here around San Antonio. That number should come down a little bit this afternoon. Heat index forecast. Really, uh, well, I say not all that bad. We're pretty used to it at this point with uh, heat indices in the upper 90s. Once we get into Sunday, heat index climbs a little bit, close to 100. Monday's the day we got to really be concerned about, I think, because temperatures come up. We're going to be in the upper 90s, and then humidity jumps up. So the heat index is going to be close to 110, I think, in some cases, even here around San Antonio. So that's probably going to prompt some heat advisories to be issued heads up there. So the good news is that we should have a frontal boundary moving in Monday night. That'll bring temperatures back down. Fingers crossed it'll bring us some rain, hopefully after the river parade. We'll time this out well, I hope. Uh, satellite picture shows things are pretty quiet here across Texas. We've got some rain out west and then, of course, some rain in the Gulf of Mexico. We're still waiting on this to become a tropical depression or tropical storm. It's not there yet. Still lacking a, a good center of circulation. But we do think that this is going to happen here pretty soon. Winds are at 35 miles per hour. And as it moves north, uh, Hurricane Center does believe this will become a tropical storm. Winds at 45 miles per hour. This is 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. Bringing some rain to the coast of Louisiana and then more rain to parts of Mississippi and Alabama. We're on the dry side of things. We're not going to get any rain out of this. But I mentioned that frontal boundary. We'll fast forward to Sunday. A couple showers along the coast. And then by Monday evening, this front's getting closer to us. Stays dry most of Monday, but Monday night as the front comes in, we could see some showers and storms. That'll be the case on Tuesday, too. And we could see a couple strong storms with all that heat and humidity in place, a lot of energy in the atmosphere. So rain chances do kick up uh, Tuesday. Monday night, 40% chance, and then Tuesday, a 30% chance. Uh, here's what it looks like in the seven-day forecast. By the way, we officially go into summer Sunday night. Uh, 98 Monday, heat index 105 plus. There's your 40% chance for rain Monday night and some lingering rain chances Tuesday and Wednesday. Elites are chances. 
Yes, That's it's nice to us. see. Very much so. And, and again, don't forget Dad this Sunday. Yeah. There's still a little time. I know the card selection is is getting smaller by the day. Yes, it is, but I'm, I'm done. You're done? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> I started early this year. <laughs> you'll, have to, you'll have to tell us during the commercial break what you got, Luis. Yeah, it's a secret. Okay. Okay. It's, okay. okay. We, won't, we won't make you say it on air, yeah, unless you want to. Ah, uh, no. no. <laughs> 523, about 76 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, the critically acclaimed Miss Juneteenth back in theaters for a holiday and a new film that looks at the history of female athletes. Juneteenth, now an official U.S. holiday, and people can mark the occasion by going to the movies. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Welcome to the Miss Juneteenth pageant. I will never get over seeing Miss Juneteenth cleaning toilets. <laughs> Miss Juneteenth is returning to theaters for one week to mark the newly declared federal holiday. Nicole Bahari stars as a former beauty queen trying to keep her teenage daughter from making the same mistakes she did. Miss Juneteenth opens Friday in more than 150 theaters. Check your local listings. 96 was absolutely the launching pad to what was possible in women's sports. The 96 effect looks back at the Atlanta Summer Olympics and the inroads female athletes made at those games. Gold medalist Dominique Dawes is among the athletes featured. And it really allowed me to bring back memories from the sport of gymnastics, obviously, and I shot that in my gym space, which was nice. Um, you know, and to really be honest and to be raw and to be candid because today I'm a 44 year old mar married mother of four. So I don't have anyone controlling me, manipulating me, editing me and telling me how I should feel. My feelings matter. My feelings are real. The 96 effect is streaming now on Peacock in Hollywood. I'm David Daniel. Right now it's 528, about 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the nation scrambles to shut down government offices for the newly approved Juneteenth holiday. We're going to take a look at what will be closed in San Antonio. The CDC continues to warn Americans about the Delta variant of the coronavirus. We'll find out which states are doing the best when it comes to vaccinations. And ahead on GMSA at 6, it's Fiesta time, and we're taking a deeper look at the meaning behind Fiesta medals. Making headlines this morning, the announcement of the new Juneteenth federal holiday has states and companies across the country scrambling to observe it properly. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, mid 70s, not too bad for now, but I'm expecting it to heat up. That's what Justin's saying. And a good morning to you. It is Friday. It is June 18th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it's going to be warm, but we can handle it because it's Friday and because it's Fiesta. So mm -hmm. things to be excited about. Mike and uh, colleagues were busy with Fiesta last night. So Justin Horn is in this morning leading things off for us. Hey, Justin. Hey there, guys. And yes, you're right. It is going to heat up a little bit this weekend and especially as we're going to do early next week. We're talking upper 90s. It is June. We would expect some hot temperatures, but the humidity is going to be up too. So that's sort of the unfortunate part. Got to pass this along. Air quality alert today. Uh, some higher levels of ozone that uh, affects people in the unhealthy category. That it's unhealthy affects people who are sensitive to it, I should say. So if you have asthma or something like that, heads up. It's one of those days. Let's talk about what's going on in the Gulf of Mexico. We've been talking about this for a week, and, and, and we really thought that this would develop into a tropical depression. It is still not there yet. We're still calling this potential tropical depression three, which uh, it's sort of just semantics here because uh, it is expected to become a tropical storm here fairly soon. But uh, all the effects are going to be well to our east. So this is uh, early tomorrow morning winds at 45 miles per hour, bringing some rain to places like New Orleans and then parts of Mississippi and Alabama. So if you're heading east of San Antonio, you will run into some rain. But most of Texas is going to stay dry, and that includes us here. Forecast calls for 84 degrees by 10 o'clock. 88 noontime will be up in the low to mid-90s by the afternoon. It'll feel like it's in the upper 90s thanks to that heat index. We do have some hope, though, in the form of some rain chances. Maybe it cools us down a little bit next week, too. We'll look at that seven-day forecast here in just a bit. Let's get over to Steven now. Any more issues on the roadways this morning? It looks like that, Justin. You know, we're spotting some crashes that are happening here. Let's get to some of the big ones. This one here off 35 at Topper 1. Let's go ahead and jump to the wall and see what's happening right over there. The view from Trans Guide shows almost like a strip of lights. We got a mess that's working out there right now, and it's quite the busy morning as we're seeing people get on the roads. Uh, we're still not too clear what happened, but we're seeing a few vehicles that look like they've stalled out over there. But right now it looks like this is being reported as a crash, so this could be causing some major delays. And we're starting to already see that 
that build up here at I-35 northbound right at Topper Wine. You see where that orange and yellow are starting to build. That's an indication that traffic is starting to slow down. So we'll be watching that one pretty closely here. Another slowdown that we've been watching here on GMSA is right along 35, just a little bit further up if you're going to New Braunfels. Uh, I-35 northbound at FM 1103. The construction is still going on out there. Again, we have been told that this is going to be wrapping up around 6 this morning, but see that traffic slowing down there to 14 miles per hour. It is moving, but it is moving very slowly right now. However, if you are coming in from New Braunfels from 35 from the southbound lanes, things are still looking pretty good. We got about a 25 minute commute time to the downtown San Antonio area. Let's go ahead and jump over here though to Seguin. We're seeing about a 29 minute commute time on I-10 and if you're coming in from Lavernia on 87, 23 minutes right now. But looks like here in the San Antonio area, it uh, looks like quite the mess right now, guys. Not a good way to start our Friday. Thank you, Stephen. Back to late breaking news now here on GMSA. The workday off to a scary start for one man. He became the victim of a carjacking while on the job. Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Rigsby Avenue near South Walters. Now, Katrina, was he hurt? Well, police say he was not physically hurt, but he was pretty shaken up, so much so that he ran from the scene, which was right here at this curb, uh, Rigsby Avenue at South Walters. So let me give you a look at the video so you can see what we found when we got here earlier. This goes back to about 4 o'clock this morning. The police say that the victim was driving a van. He had stopped at the street to pick up a patient who was going to a medical appointment. That is when someone in a silver sedan pulled up in front of him, blocking him got out with a gun, pointed it at him. Now, the driver of the van got out of his van and ran away. He was afraid for his life, according to police. And that's when the criminal jumped into the van and took off a company van. Police have been searching ever since for that van. They were here up until about 15 minutes ago, uh, going through that car, looking for any evidence that they could find. At one point, they thought they spotted the van on the road from their helicopter, but it turned out to be just another van from the same company. So that search does continue this morning for the person who carjacked a worker, someone driving a medical van. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 536 tomorrow, June 19th, known as Juneteenth, is now an official federal holiday. It commemorates the end of slavery in our country. A new holiday is rare, and as CNN's Brick Hombre reports, the announcement had states and companies across the country scrambling. More than two years after President Abraham Lincoln's historic Emancipation Proclamation, Union Army Major General Gordon Granger rode into Galveston, Texas, and on June 19th, 1865, shared the news, all slaves are free. The day became known as Juneteenth, and it's long been celebrated around the country. But now, Juneteenth is a federal holiday. All Americans can feel the power of this day and learn from our history. Juneteenth is the first federal holiday to be established since Martin Luther King Jr. Day in 1983. The rarity of it had governors across the country scrambling to make plans for their state offices. This year, June 19th falls on a Saturday, so the closest work day is today. Many states, including Maryland, Nebraska, Missouri, West Virginia, and Alabama, will give most public employees the day off. But government workers in other states, like California, will have to wait until next year. On the federal level, most employees are off today. Private businesses aren't bound by federal holidays, but companies like Apple, along with Lyft and Peloton, gave their people a day off, too. And Google canceled meetings today. 94-year-old Opal Lee has campaigned for this holiday for years. To have it actually happen was, can I use the phrase the children use? It was off the chain. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And here at home, the annual Juneteenth Festival at Comanche Park will happen later today and tomorrow. It'll take place from 11 in the morning to 11 at night. We also have more Juneteenth events listed on KSAT.com. San Antonio City Hall and most municipal offices are closed today to observe Juneteenth. The city of San Antonio adopted Juneteenth as a city holiday as part of the fiscal year 2021 budget and is observing it for the first time. Closures include the municipal court, pre-K for SA schools, and the city of San Antonio community centers. However, some services will continue to operate, including emergency services and the 311 call center. Downtown parking visitors will also enjoy an on-street parking meter holiday.
Let's get to other news. A mother accused of killing her seven year old son and leaving his body on a hiking trail in Las Vegas will be extradited back to Nevada. Samantha Moreno Rodriguez waived her extradition rights during a hearing in Denver on Thursday. The 35 year old taken into custody by an FBI task force on June 8th after the discovery of the body of her son Liam became a national case. The child's father contacted authorities after Rodriguez and Liam left their home May 24th. Rodriguez faces a murder charge. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has ordered his government to be fully prepared from confrontation with the United States. U.S.-led talks aimed at dismantling North Korea's nuclear program have been stalled for more than two years. The U.S. and others have urged the North to return to the talks, but Kim has said the U.S. must withdraw what it calls a hostile policy against North Korea if it wants the talks to resume. Time check right now. It is 539 and about 76 degrees. Coming up next, even though newly reported U.S. COVID-19 cases are dropping to some of the lowest levels of the pandemic, why some health professionals are still worried about a new variant of that virus. Outside with live cam, plan ahead. The air quality not going to be great today. Waiting for that sunrise to start on our Friday morning. You're with GMSA. We'll be right back. CDC continues to warn Americans about the Delta variant of the coronavirus. And as CNN's Mandy Gaither reports, new an analysis shows states where vaccinations are up have COVID-19 cases that are down. Newly reported U.S. COVID-19 cases are dropping to some of the lowest levels of the pandemic. But U.S. health officials say the Delta variant now accounts for close to 10 percent of those cases. It's one more reason, if you're still on the fence, uh, to go ahead and get vaccinated. The CDC continuing to warn Americans about the worrying variant, saying vaccination is key to slow the spread. It appears to be about 60 percent more transmissible, more contagious, in other words, and especially so for younger people. The link between vaccinations and COVID-19 transmission is getting clearer, exposing pockets of at-risk populations, but also a safer path forward. A CNN analysis found that states with more than half of their residents fully vaccinated tend to have lower than average case rates that are trending down, while states that have vaccinated less than half of their residents had higher average case rates. The vaccines uh, that we have do appear to be effective against the Delta variant, but you have to get both doses uh, of the mRNA vaccines. While the U.S. continues to get back to a pre-pandemic normal, health experts urge Americans not to become complacent. My concern is that the pockets of the country that have low vaccination rates actually also don't have robust public health infrastructure. They're already scaling back testing and reporting on the number of new cases, which I think is a big mistake. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. It is now 544. Up next, another major retail store joining those who are scheduled to be closed for Thanksgiving ahead of Black Friday shopping this year. And welcome back. It's about 546 in your morning consumer headlines as COVID-19 guidelines ease around the nation. Things are getting back to normal at the happiest place on Earth. Starting next month and just in time for the 4th of July, the skies above Disney theme parks will light up with color once again. Closing fireworks shows have been a popular Disney tradition since 1957. The fireworks spectaculars return July 1st at Magic Kingdom and Epcot in Florida. And the fun starts July 4th at Disneyland in California. Just Remember, before you go, park reservations are still required. Kohl's has joined the growing list of major retailers plan to be closed on Thanksgiving Day. For the second year in a row, Kohl's has made the decision to give its employees the holiday off before Black Friday. Retailer joins Target, Walmart and Best Buy in closing for the Thanksgiving holiday. Kohl's says any of its customers who still want to shop while they eat their turkey can do so virtually through the store's mobile app or website. The company says it will release its retail business hours for the entire holiday season, as well as its Black Friday specials at a later date. One retailer is warning customers they could find themselves empty-headed on the 4th of July if they don't stock up on fireworks now. Phantom Fireworks says a supply shortage that also impacted sales last year is expected to continue. Fireworks sales boomed in 2020 since so many professional displays were canceled. Many of those are coming back this year, but Phantom is advising those who want to celebrate at home to buy now. The company says shortages are due to shipment challenges in the global market. Most fireworks are imported from China. Let's see how things are looking on the roads at 548.
Good morning, Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, we have a busy morning, Mark and Stephanie. A big mess out here at 35 at Topper Wine. You can see all those flashing lights make it look like quite the scene out there. Let's go ahead and take a closer look here at our wall. This is a view from Trans Guide. You can see it's it's almost hard to distinct what you know with these lights, what's actually happening out there. But we know that it is causing some big delays. Textot is actually reporting this as a major crash again here off 35 at Topper Wine. Taking a look here at the maps, we see that that crash is causing those delays on these northbound lanes of 35. Uh, 14 miles per hour, 35. It's not looking pretty good right now if you're going to be heading in this direction. And if you're going it into New Braunfels, it doesn't look any better here. We still have this slowdown that's happening right at FM 1103. Traffic slowing down there to 14 miles per hour, and that's because there is still construction that is happening on out there. But we're hoping that that's going to be cleared out by 6 this morning, so things are going to be looking pretty smoothly, hopefully, as the day does pick up. Now, but other than that, those are the two major things that we're watching here right now. Everything else looking pretty green. If you're going to be heading to the pump uh, this morning, let's go ahead and take a look at these gas prices right now. Now, according to AAA, we're looking at here in Bear County, 267 uh, around the state, 275 and around the country, we're looking at 307. So if you're going to be heading to the gas station this morning, good to have this information uh, on your hand or your phone. So let's go ahead and take a look here. One last look at TransGuide 35 at Topper Wine. Things aren't looking any better, guys. All right, thank you, no. Stephen. Well, longtime KSAT watchers may remember a longtime meteorologist Steve Brown's mantra in the summer season comes that big blue H. High means dry. <laughs> Every, everybody, the crew <laughs> even remembers that. Sticks with you, and it's so true. I mean, this big ridge fire pressure, this is that heat high that we hate to see during the summer that sometimes sits over us. It's not over us. It's over the western part of the country, and it's not a great situation out there. They got a lot of dry conditions, wildfires. Yeah, big drought underway. And with that heat high, temperatures have been soaring. Death Valley yesterday got up to 128 degrees. Just incredible. That's six degrees shy of the all-time record on Earth, which was also set in Death Valley. And temperatures this morning have not cooled down much. It's still 96 in Las Vegas at this hour. So the heat is really on out there, and it will continue to be on today. Here in Texas, yeah, it's warm, but it's not like that. We've got temperatures in the upper 70s, 78 degrees here in, in San Antonio, 77 Waco, 76 Houston. And outside right now, we are seeing a couple of clouds. No big deal, though. 78 degrees at the airport. Southerly winds at about 5 miles per hour. We should mostly see a southeasterly wind today that will continue to bring in some moisture. But uh, dew points generally have been dropping as we've gone throughout the course of the week. 66 Kerrville, 65 Comfort, 75 in New Braunfels, 78 right now Stinson. You are in the upper 70s there in Del Rio, 76 in Catula, off in a hot spot. And those dew points holding steady at 70. Uh, you'll see lower dew points out west, as we're seeing this morning, and then some slightly higher dew points off to the east. This is where our higher heat index values will be today. Forecast calls for a feels like temperature of 97 here in San Antonio. A lot of places, and I think these numbers probably need to be a little bit higher. East of San Antonio, we'll get close to 100 for the heat index uh, this afternoon. And that's about where we've been most of the week. Here is the big picture. Most of Texas sitting pretty quiet right now. That ridge pipe pressure that's out west, there's enough influence there to keep things uh, really relatively quiet for the Lone Star State. But as you get out into the Gulf of Mexico, there is our tropical system, we'll call it, because Hurricane Center is not calling this a depression yet. They're calling it a potential tropical depression. Regardless, it's sort of semantics, right? Winds are at 35 miles per hour. This should strengthen into a tropical storm or at least get close to it. Winds at 45 miles per hour by tomorrow morning, 1 a.m. tomorrow morning. This is going to make landfall pretty quickly. Bring some rain to New Orleans and then as it moves north, uh, winds at 40 miles per hour midday Saturday. Bring some rain to parts of Mississippi and Alabama. As we've been saying, we're on the dry side of things. But as we get into Sunday and more so Monday, frontal boundary drops south. That should help to create some showers and storms late Monday night. Looks like this is going to be after sunset, but we'll have to watch it closely. There will be a lot of heat and humidity to deal with, so we could see a strong storm or two, and this will probably carry over into Tuesday. So Monday night, we have a 40% chance of rain Tuesday, about a 30% chance of rain. Here's how the seven-day forecast looks. 95 tomorrow, 95 Sunday, as we officially go into summer, and it's also Father's Day. Don't forget about that. 40% uh, chance of rain, as I mentioned, Monday night. Well, speaking of, uh, Father's Day is almost here. This morning we are celebrating one of our dads behind the scenes. Take a look. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. We love you.
my goodness, that's Jackson and Hadley, and they are the kids of our GMSA producer, Hardy. So, of course, Hardy loves his family so much. There's a family picture right there. And when they went to Disney, awesome. and, of course, he's very proud of his kiddos. He also makes time to do special things with them, even while working these crazy overnight and early morning hours. <laughs> we just wanted to share some love for him and all the other dads out there. If you're still looking for fun ways to celebrate your dad this weekend, we have some ideas on our website, just head over to ksat.com. And happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, especially Mr. Yeah. Hardy Meredith. Yes. Happy Father's Day, Hardy. Happy yeah. Father's Day. He said thank you. I wish you guys could hear him. You're welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. But uh, happy Father's Day to yes. you. Yes. Thank you. And you happy as well. Father's Day to thank you as you. well. Yeah. It's going to be a good weekend. Yeah. 553, about 76 degrees. And let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. Well, that'll be a great Father's Day if you win the lotto, right? Uh, pick three, seven, six, zero, fireball seven, daily four, four, six, three, eight, fireball three. Cash five numbers, six, eight, 10, 19, 22, Texas two step, 11, 30, 31, 35, with a bonus ball of 32. Good morning. Coming up here, double trouble, tropical storm warning for parts of southeast Louisiana, all the way through Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle, up to a foot of rain in some places that have already been inundated. And then the historic heat wave goes on in the West. More than 40 million Americans on alert from 10 states, California to Illinois now. It's expanding. Triple digit temperatures. We've got teams on the ground. I'm going to be tracking it and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, the latest details on that random shooting spree out of Arizona that uh, affected 13 people. Some big changes in Big D. We'll tell you about a stunning coaching shakeup for the Dallas Mavericks. And scary moments for a man following an overnight carjacking on San Antonio's east side. Katrina Weber standing by with a live report. As we've got a trans guide, it would be remiss if I did not mention the fathers here at KSAP that work in production and elsewhere in news. Kevin, Ralph, Robert, Chris, Azian, and Tim, happy Father's Day weekend to you as well, gentlemen. This morning, terrifying new details following a deadly shooting spree in Arizona. San Antonio police say a worker is forced to give up his company van at gunpoint. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why this affects more than just that driver coming up. The Supreme Court upholds the Affordable Care Act for a third time, securing health care for millions. I'm Micah Jachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, why some Democrats want a sitting justice to step down. And taking a look out with live cam, it's Friday and it's kind of nice out there right now. It's going to get a little warm. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you, Viva Fiesta. It is Friday, June 18th. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it's a Fiesta Friday, so very exciting. We are happy to have it back. We got the ball rolling last night on Fiesta here in South Texas. Uh, KSAT was on uh, throughout the evening, including our crews, uh, Mike Osterhage, Adam Kasky, mm -hmm. Steve Spreester, and Justin Horn is in for Mike this morning with more of the pictures as we really get yeah. the ball rolling as we said. Some viewers sent in some pictures. They did. We love to see these KSAC Connect pictures. And if you're at a fiesta and want to snap a photo, send it in. This is the best way because we can just throw it on air and we can show people like uh, this guy, Steve Spreester. I've heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good one, this guy. Uh, yeah, this was sent in last night, uh, presumably the Fiesta Fiesta event. Great shot. We love the medals, handing out the medals. We got a cool case at medal this year, too, by the way. So go check it out. Be careful if you're heading out to some of these Fiesta events, especially if they're in the afternoon, because things are going to get a little toasty this weekend. Uh, temperatures right now, not all that bad. 78 at the airport, 68 Bernie State, 65 Comfort. We have some 60s on the map. I like to see that. Uh, but here in San Antonio, it's mostly... 70s this morning. Uh, the weekend, 95 Saturday, 95 Sunday. I think we will see a little bit of extra cloud cover on Sunday, but that comes with a little bit of extra humidity too. So that means heat indices are going to jump up. And they get even hotter on Monday before hopefully some relief in the form of some showers and storms. Another look at that forecast here in just a bit. But let's go over to Stephen now. 
and take a look at what's going on on the roadways. Good morning, sir. Hey, thanks, Justin. Pretty busy morning here at 35 North. You can see that we have a lot of traffic that's building up a lot of flashing lights there as well. That's because TxDOT is reporting a major crash out in this direction. You can see that we have uh, vehicles uh, that are already starting to back up there. We do have some crews out there. Looks like the scene could be clearing soon, but right now traffic won't be clearing anytime soon. You can see that that buildup is starting right there in those northbound lanes at 35 at Topper One. You can see again traffic slowing down as 16 miles per hour, uh, improving a little bit around 43 here, but not looking really good right now. If you're going to be heading in that direction here in the next few moments, but let's go ahead and take a look at some improvements we have spotted. This one was a slowdown we've told you about at 35 northbound at FM 1103, where there was some construction. Looks like that is now clearing up. We still have a little bit of a delay there around 12 miles per hour here in those northbound lanes of 35, but you can see here things are picking up there 58 and 67 as we get a little bit closer towards New Braunfels. So that's a good sign right there. Uh, let's go ahead and bring it down over here to a stalled vehicle though that we've spotted this one here off US 90 eastbound right as they approach 35 not causing any issues right now, which is again again a good sign as the morning is just getting started here. We know a lot more people are going to be heading out on the road, so thankfully not causing any other issues here around the city. Just those two major things, and if you are coming into the downtown San Antonio area from any of these locations, looks pretty green. Take a look right here. Flotusville on uh, two on 37. That is this is a 29 minute commute time. Pleasanton, we have 28 minutes and coming in from 35 to Lytle. We have 16 minutes, but we will be watching this crash pretty closely. It doesn't look like it's improving much, guys, but again, it looks like we do have some records out there, so that could be a good sign uh, if you're heading in that direction. We hope so. Thank you very much, Stephen. Talk to you in a bit. A carjacker has created a big inconvenience for quite a few people. That person stole a van that is used to take patients to medical appointments. Katrina Weber is live where it happened at Rigsby Avenue and South Walters. And Katrina, this also had to be a big scare for the driver who was carjacked. Yes, it was. Uh, San Antonio police say that that driver ran off the minute he saw someone pointing a gun at him. It happened right at this curb here, Rigsby Avenue near South Walters. Uh, police say that uh, the driver was here waiting to pick up a patient when someone came and took his van. Let me show you the video from earlier this morning. This happened right around 4 o'clock this morning. Police say again that that driver had arrived here to pick up a patient to take to a medical appointment, was sitting at the curb when a silver sedan pulled up, blocked him off, someone got out, pointed a gun at him. Again, the van driver got out and ran away. The criminal then jumped into that company van and drove off, leaving behind that silver sedan. The police were going through it very carefully for fingerprints and also trying to determine uh, who that might belong to. They say that it had not been reported stolen at that point, but uh, possibly it may be reported stolen later. Someone might realize that that was taken uh, you know, during the night and then report it. But either way, police are still looking for the van. They've been going around this area. We've actually seen police drive by here several times. And uh, at one point they thought they did spot the stolen van, but it turned out to be just another one that looked like it that belonged to the same company. Reporting live from the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you for the report, Katrina. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for a driver they believe crashed into a handful of vehicles at an apartment complex. Happened just before 2.30 this morning at the NOAA Apartments in the 300 block of Treeline Park. That's in the Alamo Heights area. Officers say the driver of a Ford SUV is suspected of hitting three parked vehicles with the SUV. Police did find the suspect's SUV parked at the complex. They have not found the driver. No one was hurt in the crash. Topping your morning headlines, new details out of Arizona following a random shooting spree. One person killed and a dozen others hurt near Phoenix. We've learned the FBI and the ATF are now joining the investigation to figure what led to the shooting, what, were, what, what weapons were used, and where the shooter got them. Investigators say a man drove to eight different locations, randomly shooting at people on streets and along highways. At least one gun was found in the suspect's vehicle. So look for the latest on this story coming up next on Good Morning America, beginning at 7. Israel has launched airstrikes on the Gaza Strip for a second time since a shaky ceasefire ended last month's 11-day war. The strikes came after activists mobilized by the territory's Militant Hamas rulers launched firebombs from balloons into Israel for a third straight day. There were no immediate reports of casualties from the airstrikes, which could be heard from Gaza City. Israel's military said it targeted Hamas military compounds and a rocket launching site. 
Earlier, Israel used stun grenades and a foul-smelling solution called skunk water to disperse Palestinian protesters from Damascus Gate in eastern Jerusalem. For the third time, the U.S. Supreme Court has upheld the Affordable Care Act. In a 7-2 decision, the conservative-leaning court ruling against Texas and 17 other Republican-led states that had sued. ABC's Aika Jachi is in Washington with more. It was supposed to be a moment behind the scenes. <laughs> then Vice President Biden heard on a hot mic celebrating Hi, President Obama's signature achievement, passing the Affordable Care Act. This morning, recalling that moment 11 years ago, before an official statement from President Biden, this tweet from his POTUS account. It remains, as ever, a BFD, and it's here to stay. In a 7-2 decision, the Supreme Court upholding the law for a third time. 31 million Americans are insured under the ACA, an all-time high. The law also protects 54 million with pre-existing conditions. President Obama writing, this ruling reaffirms what we have long known to be true. True. The Affordable Care Act is here to stay. The conservative-leaning court ruling the plaintiffs, Texas, and 17 other Republican-led states who objected to the mandate requiring insurance had not suffered any injury that would give them standing to sue because there is no longer a penalty for not having insurance. Justice Stephen Breyer declaring they have failed to show that they have standing to attack as unconstitutional the act's minimum essential coverage provision. So Recent comments from Senate like Minority you. Leader Mitch McConnell are pointing to another court battle. Yeah. McConnell threatening to potentially block a Biden Supreme Court nominee in 2023 and 2024 if Republicans win back the Senate. Now, a new push from some progressive Democrats for liberal Justice Stephen Breyer, the oldest serving justice on the court, to step down. This morning, 18 legal scholars publishing a full-page ad in the New York Times calling Breyer a remarkable jurist, but saying it's best for the country if he steps down. Now, no one can force a sitting justice to step down. Justice Breyer is showing no indication he's ready to go. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. And time now is 6.09 and about 76 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA Friday, it's summertime and the San Antonio Public Library has some fun activities for your kids. We'll tell you all about them. And if you're looking to buy a house, you probably know that we're in a red hot seller's market. So we have some tips to help you land your new home. Outside with live cam, a full Fiesta forecast is coming up. The sun is now coming up over San Antonio. Glad you're with us to start your day right here on GMSA. Welcome back. It is now 613. You've been looking to buy a house recently. You know it's a red hot seller's market. In fact, some homes in Texas are selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars above listing price. And most real estate agents say the prices are being driven up by a number of factors, including a lower inventory of homes and a massive influx of people relocating to Texas from other states. So how do you make yourself more competitive in the eyes of sellers? For starters, many realtors will have you get pre-approved for a mortgage before they even take you out to see homes. This does a couple things. One, it lets you know what your buying power is and it lets the seller know you've already got a big part of your financial legwork out of the way. Once you know your budget, shop for homes that are listed for under your max offer. That way you're able to bid above the asking price. The seller will most likely not want to engage in a lengthy bidding war if they can help it. So consider making your best offer up front. Cher Macholka with the San Antonio Board of Realtors says the current market can be discouraging, especially for first time home buyers. But pre planning and leaning on your realtor can go a long way. It doesn't hurt to ask questions. So I'm sure, you know, you'll have your realtor go ahead and do that preliminary research for you. Okay, this house has come on the market, boom, you're looking at it in real time. And uh, I make the recommendation, call ahead of time, see what you can find out on what's, you know, are they, is it in a bid situation? Are they taking bids? Or are they going to wait and see how many bids they get? That's very important. There's going to be some disappointments as you're finding, but if you plan it correctly, again, and be proactive, you probably have better results, I hope. Another tip, you might consider homes that need a little refurbishing, or you could look at neighborhoods located a little further away from popular areas. 
and summertime is finally here and that means your little ones are out of school and probably looking for some fun things to fill the days with. So luckily the San Antonio Public Library has your back. Yep, San Antonio Public Library or SAPL. Their summer is underway with tons of activities for adults, teens and kids. So how does it work you ask? Well, first you head to your local library branch. You pick up a sand bucket activity log sheet. This is where your kids will write or draw everything they hope to accomplish over the summer. And that could be reading a certain amount of books or new things they want to learn about. Then in July, you could take the sand bucket back to the library and share all of the accomplishments for a special prize that you can take home. Beginning July 1st, we hope that they will come back to the library and tell us all about what they did this summer. Tell us about how they met their goals so we can celebrate with them. And we'll also give them a certificate that they can hold on to display proudly however they like, saying that they did celebrate summer with the San Antonio Public Library. And that's not all. The library is also hosting a number of online events throughout the summer. That list includes a scavenger hunt, pajama story time, and a special presentation from Dinosaur George, and you can explore opera for kids. Summer with Sapple runs until August 31st. I like those little graphics, the little smiley face. It's so cute. No popsicles. <laughs> 616 on your Friday morning. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cabasso's. A lot of traffic out there. Yeah, and I like the pineapple. I think that looked it's pretty good. Cute. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't look good. <laughs> it's made me hungry. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, we still have this issue here at 35 at Topper Wine that is causing a lot of issues if you're heading into the New Braunfels area. This is actually right near Live Oak. You can see that we have about two lanes that are blocked right now. Traffic is moving, but moving very slowly. This is right now the big issue at this hour that's causing a lot of delays. Take a look right here at the map. All that red and yellow means that the congestion uh, is happening there in northbound right at Topper Wine. You can see that traffic again slowing down to 12 and 17 miles per hour, so not looking good right now on 35, uh, but we did have wreckers out there, so hopefully that will be clearing out pretty soon. Now, we did have another issue on 35 north and a little bit further up uh, because of construction, but you can see here, if you're going into the New Braunfels area, there's not many issues right now. That construction that was happening out there has since cleared, and again, the major thing that we are watching right now is going to be that crash in the northbound lanes of 35 at Topper Wine, so be careful. Uh, if you are going to be celebrating Fiesta today, according to Public Works, we have some road closures closures that we want you to be aware of. This is going to be happening uh, from Fiesta de los Reyes right at Market Square. Dolorosas and San Saba are going to be close to Commerce and Santa Rosa from 10 this morning all the way until midnight. Now this is going to run through June 27th, so do expect that if you're heading in to celebrate Fiesta today. But other than that, this is going to be the big thing that we're watching right now, Justin. Not lots of headaches for drivers out in that direction. Stephen, thank you. And yes, uh, Fiesta is on this weekend. So is Father's Day. Don't forget about Dad. Let's check in on the forecast for Father's Day if you've got plans to be out and about. Here's how it's looking. Uh, we'll get temperatures uh, 76 to start, 88 noontime, 93 by 3 o'clock. Ties are nice. I'll take a big screen TV, though. That'd be, that'd be really good for Father's oh, really? Day. I'm just putting out some, some suggestions there if uh, the fan was watching. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, more humidity by the afternoon. I'm telling you, uh, not good. Okay, uh, 93. Probably it's going to feel a little bit warmer by the afternoon because we'll have more humidity in place. Let's talk about what's going on in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, there is potential tropical depression out there. Still a potential tropical depression. It really hasn't looked all that great just yet. Notice all the precipitation, all the cloud cover is on the east side of what we think here is probably a little bit of a center of circulation, although it still looks pretty ragged to me. Winds are at 35 miles per hour, gusting to 45. It's moving north at 14 miles per hour. Uh, Hurricane Center still thinks this is going to become a tropical storm. Regardless, I think the main concern here is flooding for parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. They're going to get a ton of rain out of this as it moves north, and it will likely make landfall sometime early tomorrow morning. All the rain stays well east of really even Texas. There could be a couple showers in Houston, maybe Beaumont, but that's about it. We're on the dry side of things. And uh, that will move away and weaken. Then as uh, we get into uh, next week, there is some indications, maybe a little bit of a pattern change. We'll show you that here in just a second. By the way, if it does get named, it would be Claudette. Danny is next in line, Elsa, Fred, Grace. And uh, my kids are thrilled this year that Anna and Elsa are both on the tropical cycle. Uh, list, interesting. A uh, little Disney flair there. All right, outside. <laughs> Uh, we've got uh, some mostly clear skies, temperatures 78 degrees at the airport, 77 Stinson, 73 Kelly, 74 Randolph. Uh, winds are pretty light at this point. 60s and 70s on the map. Feels pretty good up in the hill country. We got mid 60s for Curvo and Comfort. 
for June. That really is not all that bad. 72 Carrizo Springs, 75 down there in Catula. Dew points range from the 60s out west, mid 60s to low 70s off to the east. And where you see these higher dew points is where you will have the higher heat indices today. Here in San Antonio, probably tacking on two or three degrees. It'll feel like 97 during the afternoon, 98 on Saturday. We mentioned the heat index starts to jump up on Father's Day and then by Monday, not only does the temperature jump up, but so does the humidity. So we start to enter some dangerous territory there on Monday. The good news is we'll get some relief in the form of a frontal battery. We're kind of in between two, two uh, weather events here. We got the big ridge of high pressure out west, a tropical system in the Gulf. And in between that, we'll be able to squeeze a front south and push it into the area by it looks like late Monday, which could kick off some showers and storms. With all that heat and humidity, we'll have to watch for a couple strong storms too. This will be mainly Monday night into Tuesday. Uh, we'll certainly keep an eye on the situation, but here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 95 Saturday, 95 Sunday, 98 our hottest day Monday with that heat index 105 plus then a 40% chance of storms Monday night, 30% chance on Tuesday and it does cool down some 92 on Tuesday guys. So for Father's Day, I just want a bucket of ice. <laughs> Maybe some Fair sweet enough. tea on the side. I think that'll be appropriate. Arrangements could be made. 621, yes. about 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, has the former Texas football superstar taken his last snap as an NFL quarterback? We're going to tell you what could be coming next in RG3's career. Hey there, Robert Larson here. You know, with Simply Safe, you get comprehensive, professionally monitored home security without having to leave your house or have anyone to come install it. You simply order it online, it gets delivered to your door, and you can set it up yourself in just a few minutes. Imagine that. So take it from an expert. Get Simply Safe and protect your home, your family, and anything else you need to keep a close eye on. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA approved over-the-counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. In a shocking move, Rick Carlisle has resigned as head coach of the Dallas Mavericks, ending a 13-year career with the team, including a 2011 NBA title. Carlisle released a statement that said, in part, after a number of in-person conversations with Mark Cuban over the last week, today I informed him I will not be returning as head coach at the Dallas Mavericks. This was solely my decision, in quote. Carlisle had been the NBA's third longest tenured coach behind Greg Popovich and the Heat's Eric Spolstra till now. Observers believe friction between Carlisle and team star Luka Doncic helped lead to Carlisle's departure. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Hey, remember this guy, former Baylor quarterback Robert Griffin III, played his, has he played his last down in the NFL? And if so, is he about to enter the broadcast booth for ESPN or Fox? The New York Post is reporting the two networks are in a bidding war for RG3 services, but he hasn't decided yet whether or not he wants to continue to play. The 31-year-old has played seven seasons in the league after winning the Heisman and NFL Rookie of the Year. But his auditions with both networks were apparently outstanding, according to the Post, and now he has a few decisions to make. Good luck, RG3. Yeah, a lot of options. <laughs> Time now is 626 and about 76 degrees right now. Ahead on GMSA, the latest on an overnight carjacking on San Antonio's east side. Katrina Weber is standing by with the details. And a lot of construction on the roadways. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos in our next half hour. San Antonio police are keeping their eyes open for a company van taken during a carjacking. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why that van means so much to many people. A desperate search taking place in North Carolina for those involved in a tragic tubing accident. Details ahead. Back here at home outside with live cam. It's a pleasant start to our Friday morning. Viva Fiesta. We've got a Fiesta forecast coming up, but there is a catch. The air quality over our area is not going to be great today. 
Uh, good morning to you. It is Friday. It is June 18th and we've got some closures we want to tell you about. San Antonio City Hall and most municipal offices are closed today in observance of Juneteenth. The city adopted Juneteenth as a city holiday as part of the fiscal year 2021 budget and is observing it for the first time. Closures include municipal court, pre-K for SA, schools, and the city of San Antonio community centers. However, some services will continue to operate, including emergency services and the 311 call center. Downtown parking uh, visitors will also enjoy an on-street parking meter holiday. And the annual Juneteenth Festival at Comanche Park will happen later today and tomorrow. It will take place from 11 in the morning to 11 at night. We also have more Juneteenth events listed on our website at kset.com. But also this weekend, Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Happy Father's Day to you, Mark. Thank you. And to Justin Horn, who is in for Father's Mike Osterhage this morning and somehow Thank got you. even taller. I feel yes. really tall. It's, uh, it's okay. <laughs> Try to jump up. And <laughs> uh, okay. That's a good I, I thing. We can fix it. It's okay. Yeah. Be it's proud, okay. Justin. It's not fixable. Be it's proud. <laughs> Mark mentioned the air quality. It is not great today. Uh, it is in the unhealthy category when we're talking about those who are sensitive to ozone. It's an ozone action day. We see these every now and then, late spring, early summer. But just be careful. If it's something that bugs you, uh, it's not great today. Thankfully. We were thinking some of that Saharan dust would work into the atmosphere. Later this week didn't happen, so we don't have that to contend with. Uh, as we look at temperatures, 68 degrees, Bernie State, 68 Rio Medina, 74 Seguin, 73 in Pleasanton. Really pretty nice morning, but it is going to be another hot afternoon. Temperatures will make it into the mid 90s. Mostly sunny skies, noon time to uh, uh, 3 o'clock. Uh, feels like temperatures, by the way, will be in the upper 90s this afternoon. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We're, stu we're still watching what's going on in the Gulf of Mexico. Tropical depression trying to develop. We're going to give you the latest there coming up in just a few minutes. But I know we've had some issues in the traffic department. Looks like that area around Topper Wine is still a problem, right? Yeah, you know, Justin, we actually have some good news. Finally, here at uh, 35 at Topper Wine, that crash had happened out there earlier in these northbound lanes has since cleared, but we're still seeing a little bit of a delay right now. And the view from Transguide shows that traffic is moving, but still a little bit of a slow. Actually, just cleared from our system right there. Looking like things are moving smoothly once again here at 35 North, right at Topper Wine, where that crash was causing some big delays for our early morning commuters. But take a look right over here. 57 miles per hour, picking up to 68, taking a little bit slow, but things are looking good right now, guys, at 35. We have also spotted a stall that's happening here off 35 north around at AT&T Parkway. Uh, actually, this is in the southbound lanes at AT&T Parkways, but not causing any issues right now for our drivers in that area, but something to be on the lookout for. Be sure to give them plenty of room. Uh, let's go ahead and jump to everywhere else around the city in our outlying areas. Everything looks really good right now, which is a good sign to head out the door, get your Friday started, your Fiesta Friday started a little little bit early here, so some good news there, guys. And let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times. If you are coming in from 90 on cat from Castroville, we're looking at 19 minutes coming in from Bernie on I 10 to the downtown San Antonio area, 24 minute commute time. And if you are coming in from Bulverde, a little bit yellow 281 right now is looking a little yellow again, coming in from Bulverde uh, to downtown San Antonio. But guys, things are looking at like they have improved here at 35 at top Ryan, which is, of course, what we like to see. Thank you, Stephen. A van driver making an early morning pickup ended up with a whole load of trouble. San Antonio police say someone stole his company van at gunpoint. It happened outside a home on Rigsby Avenue near South Walters. Katrina Weber is at the scene with a live report. Now, Katrina, you mentioned that he was at the location waiting to drive someone to a medical appointment. That's right, he was sitting right here at this curb one moment and running for his life the next moment, according to police. Now, this happened right around 4 o'clock this morning. It seems that the carjacker took one vehicle and left behind another. The silver sedan you'll see in the video is a car that the carjacker arrived in. Police say the van driver told them he was sitting at the curb when that sedan pulled up in front of him. Someone got out of it and then pointed a gun at him. Officers say that's when the van driver got out of his van and ran away. The criminal then took off in the van. Police spent some time checking that car that was left behind for fingerprints and anything else that could help them identify the carjacker. They've also been driving around in this area looking for that stolen van, but the last word we had is that they had not found it or the carjacker. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
New this morning, a woman is now in custody following a deadly hit and run crash. 35 year old Racine Renee Delgado was arrested yesterday. The crash happened last month in the 1700 block of South General McMullen, and that's where police say Delgado rear ended a man riding a motorcycle. After the crash, witnesses say they saw her speed off. The motorcyclist died from his injuries. Delgado facing a charge of failing to stop and render aid, resulting in death. Now to a desperate search going on in North Carolina for those involved. What's already is a tragic river tubing trip. It started Wednesday and has already claimed the lives of at least three people. ABC's Ginger Bolton has the details. This morning, rescue teams are scouring a river in North Carolina for the second day after a deadly tubing accident. Five tubers went over the dam. Five tubers went over the dam. According to police, nine people were floating on the Dan River near the Virginia border on Wednesday night when they went over a dam. It's a pretty steep drop from the river um, over the dam there, and uh, it's dangerous. Obviously, four survivors were found by construction workers 18 hours later, clinging to whatever they could find. Four were located. Um, they were uh, hanging on to various items uh, there, and we were able to get swift water rescue in to rescue those four individuals. Officials then scoured a massive stretch of the river looking for the other five people. We have done both an air and water search at this time. Um, we've had an aircraft that have flown the river, and we still have a current water uh, search going on at this time. We have two boats on the river at this time. Thursday night, a devastating discovery. Officials telling ABC News three of the tubers were found dead. Their bodies recovered three miles away from where they were last seen. Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. The U.S. Supreme Court has rejected a challenge to the Affordable Care Act again. In a 7-2 decision, it was the third time the court has preserved the 2010 health care law. Texas and other Republican-leading states had sought to strike down the law on technical arguments after Congress reduced to zero the tax penalty for failing to get health insurance. The majority decision, written by Justice Stephen Breyer, concluded that none of the plaintiffs suffered any injury from zeroing out the penalty and thus lacked legal standing to bring the lawsuit at all. Russia's President Vladimir Putin is praising U.S. President Joe Biden, describing him as, quote, a professional who is, quote, completely knowledgeable on all issues, end quote. Putin's comments come in the aftermath of a three-hour summit with the president on Wednesday in Geneva. Russia's president's praise a little surprising to some, in part because Russia has criticized Biden as, quote, unquote, mentally unstable during the 2020 presidential election. Here locally, the partial demolition of the Witt Press building started earlier this week, and the development of the property was a topic of passionate efforts to save the historic building. The city's Historic and Design Review Commission approved the partial demolition of it, allowing for the development to move forward. The plan included the preservation of the front concrete facade as well as the two side walls. The Witt Printing Building is part of the city's and nation's Mexican-American history. Time check, 638, about 76 degrees. Fiesta is officially underway, and you can't have Fiesta without medals ahead on GMSA. We're going to show you some fun medal designs and tell you about why they make such an impact on the community. Introducing your 2021 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Grace Huey, and I'm this year's queen of the Order of the Alamo. Viva Fiesta! The Order of the Alamo is the oldest royal court in the Fiesta celebrations, and for this year's queen, it's a family affair. My dad and my brother being a part of the Order of the Alamo and a sister-in-law, and so I think that truly shapes it and just really brings it close to home. Elizabeth attended the University of Oklahoma, where she earned a degree in communications. I really think that my major, I got so much out of it because at the end of the day, any kind of job field you go into, for the most part, you are dealing with people. Elizabeth is a kindergarten teacher, and just as her teacher left an impression on her, she hopes to do the same with her students. My kindergarten teacher was fabulous, and I still know her to this day, and I want to be able to just create, make an impact in these kids' lives because they are our future learners and, and leaders. When she isn't reigning as queen, Elizabeth does charity work at the Believe It Foundation and enjoys spending time with family. I like to fish, I, I like to go to the beach and go to the ranch with friends.
It's so cool. I haven't seen some of these yet. It's, <laughs> and it's nice to see 2021 on some of them. Yeah, some of them have them, so they're pretty cool. Mm -hmm. that, uh, it's finally Fiesta weekend. We can't talk about Fiesta, of course, without talking about all these medals. Mm -hmm. They are truly a unique part of Fiesta, and just about every organization taking part in Fiesta has one. RJ Marquez introduces us to a local collector and tells us why these medals mean so much to the San Antonio community. For many San Antonians, medals are the heart of Fiesta. These bright and shiny trinkets are arguably as popular as the Fiesta parades and events, with people going all out to wear, collect, and trade them. We've been going to Fiesta since we could walk. Natasha Gonzalez and her husband Albert are San Antonio natives. They've been collecting medals for years and started their own business, Mira Medals, four years ago. They're getting bigger every year. <laughs> and they're getting more intricate every year. And so it's become a form of art at this point. Gonzalez has hundreds of medals, including one showing the king of country, George Strait, and one of the queen of Tejano, Selena. But like most collectors, she definitely has her favorites. Like a Godzilla-themed medal that was designed for her son by a famous comic book artist. It means so much to my son, just the pure enjoyment he gets from handing them out to other kids and, and people at events. And then there's a La Llorona medal that moves and makes noise. <laughs> Gonzalez says spotting new and interesting medals is a science. If there's one that I don't know, I will definitely say, where did you get that? You know, how do I get it? And then also I ask, who does it support? Um, because it is important for me to know where the money is going. And that's another big part of Fiesta Medals. They can be made to promote a business or just for fun, but many are created specifically to raise money for nonprofits and charities. So even though Fiesta won't be 100% back to normal this year, the medal tradition is back. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And if you want a quick history of lesson on Fiesta Medals, you can check out KSAT Explains, which will be, have a deep dive on all the history behind your favorite Fiesta tradition. So, yeah, uh, uh, this is an interesting one. This is from, this one? yeah, this is from Sovia Ladiano. And, of course, we all know her as the Spurs lady. And, yes. you know, she overcame some medical conditions, and she is still out there, and she has a 2021 medal. I like it. I love this one from uh, UT Health San Antonio. And this one's from University of the Incarnate Word. Of course, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of these medals uh, out there right now. But it's so fun yeah. to talk about uh, Fiesta medals. Also fireworks, did you catch the fireworks last night? Yeah, it was all part of the grand finale to the Fiesta Fiesta event last night to kick off all of the celebrations. So fireworks could be seen lighting up the night sky near the Tower of Americas. KSAT 12's Fiesta coverage continues tonight, and it is bigger and better than ever this year. Starting at 8 p.m., KSAT 12 and the new 96.1 Now will feature Black Eyed Peas, Ava Max, and AJR. They're going to be helping San Antonio's reignite Fiesta. Plus, Mark and I are taking you to our city streets for the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau Porch Parade of Decorated Homes, where neighborhoods compete to show off the best Fiesta decorations. And on Monday, Texas Cavaliers River Parade is at Arneson River Theater, plus Susan Naylor is the Grand Marshal Spurs Champ Tony Parker, honorary Grand Marshal. Tune into the Cavaliers River Parade, 7 p.m. Monday, followed by SA Live's After Party. You can watch it all right here on KSAT 12 and KSAT.com. By the way, a programming note, ABC's Juneteenth special set to air tonight from 8 to 10 will air tomorrow morning at 2 a.m. right here on KSAT. And we are super excited about Fiesta, and so is Steven Cavazos. Yeah, yeah, I love that Fiesta music that we play. This It reminds, makes me want to do the salsa if I knew how to <laughs> Every time salsa. we hear it, right? Yeah, I, I'll try. I'll try to do it, so uh, who knows? But, you know, things are looking pretty good for this Fiesta Friday. Uh, very green around the Alamo City and our outlying areas. Let's go ahead and take a look, though, at some stalls that we have spotted that aren't causing too many issues right now for our early morning commuters. This one on I-35 southbound at AT&T Parkway. It's been there for a little bit uh, a while, but not causing any real delays right now in those areas. So let's jump over to another stall that we spotted right over here at State Highway 151 westbound right at Patrol. Franco, another one that's not causing very many issues right now. As we know, people are heading out on the roads, getting ready to get to their destination. If one of the places you're heading to is the gas station, well, we got your gas prices right here from AAA. Here in Bear County, we're looking at 267, and around the state, AAA reports 275, and around the country, we're looking at 307. So still pretty steady from what we saw a little bit earlier this week. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here at TransGuy. Justin, things are looking pretty good as the sun's coming out. Stephen, thank you. And yeah, you can see some of the clear skies here. We're starting off with mostly clear skies. A few clouds last night. Take a look at this picture from our KSAC Connect Sky Watcher, who's a great photographer, by the way, sent this in. Said it's a Fiesta sunset. 
I'd say so. The colors are right. Beautiful shot. And yes, we are in full fiesta mode here. We're going to get some decent weather over the weekend, although I'll caution you and you probably have figured this out by now. It's going to be a little bit hot. So if you're out and about at those events, take the water with you. Good news is we're not as hot as Death Valley. Death Valley got up to 128 yesterday. That's just six degrees shy of the all time record high for the earth. Death Valley also holds that, holds that record, by the way. It's 134. That was set back in 1913. Uh, outside for us, uh, as Stephen showed you with some of those trans guide uh, cameras, it is mostly clear. 78 degrees. Humidity is at 76 percent. We've got a light breeze out of the south. Temperatures have dipped into the 60s, though, for those up in the hill country. 68 Bandera, 65 Kerrville, 68 Bernie Stage. Really nice up there. We're dealing with mid 70s here across Bear County and 76 out in New Braunfels. Uh, 72 Carrizo Springs, and you're at 70 in Rock Springs. Dew points, uh, well, they vary. We've got mid 60s out west, and then they jump into the 70s as you go east. So those areas where the dew points are a little bit higher is where you will see those higher heat indices today. Feels like numbers will be close to 100 in New Braunfels. I would imagine probably Gonzales too. This says 96, but I'm thinking more 100 for your feels like temperature around 5 o'clock or so. And then probably uh, heat indices near 100, Carrizo Springs and Eagle Pass as well. Here in San Antonio, heat index will be close to 100 next few days. And then it really jumps up on, on Monday. And that's because not only do temperatures heat up, but humidity starts to surge back in. Or we at least get higher dew points. Heat index could close in on 110. Monday afternoon. So that's that dangerous territory. Look for some heat advisories to be posted on Monday. Big picture here. We can see our system in the Gulf of Mexico. Still a potential tropical depression. Regardless of how it's classified, this is going to be a rainmaker for those in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Winds are at 35 miles per hour right now. Forecast to become a tropical storm by early tomorrow. Winds at 45 miles per hour. And you can see where some of that heavy rain will be around New Orleans and maybe even Mobile, Alabama. And then this starts to turn off to the north and east away from Texas. We continue to be on the dry side of things. We could see a few extra clouds on Sunday, but that's about it. We're not getting any rain out of this. Down the line, though, uh, the pattern opens up a little bit, and we get a, a weak frontal boundary to work south. Uh, regardless of whether it pushes through or not, it should kick off some showers and storms. This is Monday around 7 o'clock. I know we have the river parade. Hopefully storms, if we do get them, will come after that. Monday night looks to be sort of the main time frame here. And then into Tuesday, uh, with that frontal boundary still sitting around, we'll have some rain chances. So the forecast looks like this. 94 today, 95 tomorrow, mostly sunny. 95 Sunday, a few extra clouds. And then a 40% chance of rain late Monday night into Tuesday. 30% chance of rain on Tuesday and another slight chance on Wednesday. Well, wow, Monday, that's going to be close to the century mark. It is going to be hot and it will be humid. And you wouldn't be surprised if a few places actually touched 100, right? Uh, I would not be surprised at all. It's, it's definitely possible, especially south and west of San Antonio. Yes, sir. Oh my goodness. We'll be prepared. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. 651 on your Friday morning, about 76 degrees. And speaking of the heat, are you ready for the rising cost of keeping your house cool this summer? Tomorrow on GMSA, what the U.S. Department of Energy says you can do right now to save as much as 10% a year. Outside with live cam. And again, happy Father's Day to everyone everywhere. We'll be right back. Happy Fiesta Friday and happy Holy Father's Day and special shout out to my dad. Well, things are looking pretty good here in the Alamo City and our outlying areas. Very green on this Friday, but we do have a slowdown that's causing a little bit of issues right here at 1604 westbound right at Hosman. You can see a little bit of yellow there, but nothing too major right now, which is a good sign. Pretty good view here at I-10 at the Y as we're getting our day started. People heading out of the roads, buckle up and be safe, but looks like the weather could be pretty hot and good though. Yep, that's right, Stephen. Uh, mostly clear skies. We'll get those temperatures up around 94 this afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. Southeast chilly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Seven day forecast is fairly busy for mid June. We'll get up around uh, 95 uh, Saturday, 95 Sunday as we officially go into summer. Monday is going to be a really hot day. We'll watch for a couple storms late Monday night and then a few more lingering showers and storms Tuesday into Wednesday and it does cool down thankfully by Tuesday down to 92 but a hot weekend for sure. All right, yes. Battle of Flowers, Fiesta Flambeau, Porch Parade special tonight here on KSAT from 8 to 10 o'clock. Check it out. And happy Father's Day to you Thank and you. to you and to Thank all you. the fathers out there. Have a great weekend. It's going to be a hot one. <laughs> it is. Good morning America's next. We will see you back here for GMSA at 9.